Today we're working on the cylinder heads for my 2012 LC9 5.3 engine that broke down at 150,000 miles with an AFM lifter failure. If you've been following along, you know that we've honed the block, balanced the rotating assembly, and are moving towards our final assembly with this last bit of machine work on the cylinder heads. Aside from being fairly dirty, these heads really didn't appear to be in too poor of condition upon teardown. No obvious damage stuck out aside from one cylinder which looked like a small piece of debris had bounced around on the cylinder at some point. And once everything was clean, it appeared that the intake valves were in near perfect condition, while the exhaust valves did have a fair bit of pitting on the faces. Nevertheless, my goal here is to build myself a very nice engine, even if it is overkill for a daily driver. So for the heads, I'm going with a set of manly stainless intake and exhaust valves. And as a side note, there will be links in the description to our website for all of the parts used in this video if you want to support the channel. The first step to get started on our heads is to determine whether or not the valve guides are worn in excess. So we are measuring the valve stems of our new valves and then setting up our small hole bore gauge to measure the guides and check our valve stem clearance. Upon inspection, the intake guides were all fairly straight at just over two thousandths clearance with maybe a few tenths or less of wear right at the end of the guides. On the other hand, the exhaust guides had over two thousandths wear on the ends, indicating that they should be replaced. With the head fixtured to our TCM25 guide machine, we'll insert a pilot into the valve guide and level the cylinder head. We start the process of removing the worn exhaust guides with a tool to cut the top of the valve guide flush with the cylinder head casting. Once the top of the valve guide has been removed, we will drill out the inside of the valve guide to help relieve some of the press fit and make it easier to drive out without damaging the parent bore of the head. We also only drill about two thirds of the way through, thus leaving a step that we can drive against to remove the valve guide. Sometimes you'll have luck simply driving the guides out without going to the extra effort of drilling out the ID. But we found that in aluminum heads, it generally makes removing the guides without damaging the head a bit easier. At this point, we'll simply take a driver that fits down inside the newly drilled guide, using the air hammer to drive against the step that was left at the bottom. If you drive too aggressively, there's a good chance that you're gonna break the bottom half of the guide off. So I like to take it a bit slower and have some finesse to help the guide come out in one piece. Recently, we've been using liquid nitrogen to aid in the install process of guides in aluminum heads. And in this case, I know the guides need to be a set height from the spring pad, so I've made up a set of spacers to the proper dimension. With the head heated and the guide soaked in liquid nitrogen, I slip the spacers over the end and push the guide into place, at which point the temperature equalizes and the press fit is achieved. Once all of the new guides are installed, we'll give it a quick once over to make sure that all of our heights are correct before moving on to fitting our guides to the desired valve stem clearance. This is done using our diamond valve guide hone, which removes material from the ID of the guide with the aid of a bit of honing oil. To check our final dimension, I like to use a combination of our sturdy carbide pilots and our small hole bore gauge. With the right size pilot chosen, I can check the feel of the pilot to make sure our fit is correct, as well as then going back and double checking that the guide is straight with the bore gauge. Finally, we've moved over to the Surti to machine our valve seats, starting on the intake side with a multi-angle seat cutter. This cutter has a 75 degree throat angle, a 60 degree bottom angle, the 40 thousandths wide 45 degree seat angle, followed by a 35 degree top angle that then has a radius into the chamber. Sometimes when the cutter is using nearly the whole face width as it is here, it can be difficult to get it to cut without chatter. So I was playing around with the RPM and the pressure I was cutting with, as well as experimenting with a bit of coolant to aid in cutting. I should also note that I measured the valve tip height and compared to our stock specifications as the valve train setup for my engine is non-adjustable. After getting one valve right, I was then checking an easier measurement from the head gasket surface with a dial indicator to ensure that all of my valves would be within a reasonable tolerance from the factory specification on their depth. After finishing the machining on all of the intake seats, I went ahead and moved on to machining the exhaust valve seats. For the exhaust seats, I made the decision to go with a cutter which consisted of a radius into the throat to an approximately 70 thousandths wide 45 degree seat angle which merged into a 39 degree top angle with a radius into the chamber. 
To get my exhaust seeds cut to the correct depth for our tip length to come out where I wanted it, I simply cut until I could see that I had the full seat width with a sliver of top angle, and this put me at just the right dimension. I went ahead and filmed a bit of cutting in slow motion to slow things down and give you a better view of what cutting seats with this type of tooling really looks like. While we're watching this mesmerizing footage, I want to give you all a reminder to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description of this video, as well as maybe drop a comment, as my dad and I really get a kick out of reading what everyone has to say about our videos. You might be noticing that this cutter is leaving a sharp edge at the bottom of the radius on the valve seat. Obviously sharp edges like this aren't ideal, but with this cutter set to the correct diameter for the valves we're using, it's a bit unavoidable. Luckily it's pretty simple to come back with a second cut with a steep angle cutter and simply blend the seat until that sharp edge is gone. I should also note that the transition from the intake seats into the chamber was a bit sharp, so I did end up going back off camera by hand and simply smoothing that transition a bit with a carbide burr. All in all, the seats were looking great, and it was time to head over to the surfacing machine to put a nice surface on these heads to get them ready for the new multi-layered steel head gaskets that we'll be using during the assembly process. In total, I only took a couple of thousandths off of each head, as they really weren't warped at all. Before moving on to the assembly, the last bit of machining I did was to regrind the valves, just to be sure that they're perfect, and I also went ahead and added a back cut on the intake valve, which I'm sure added 40 or 50 or maybe even 100 horsepower to the engine. We also did some final checks on our stem height and spring installed height, as well as testing the new pack valve springs that are being installed. Being a daily driver, I decided to stay pretty mild on the camshaft, but that being said, we still upgraded the springs to accommodate the higher lift of the cam that I decided to go with. As usual during assembly, it's important to make sure that all of the moving parts have assembly lubricant applied to keep things lubricated during that initial startup, and the heads were assembled with top hat style valve stem seals which also act as the seats for the valve springs. With our pneumatic spring compressor, the new springs, retainers, and valve keepers were installed. And with that, I think we have a great looking set of cylinder heads ready to go to move forward with the build stage of this project. It's been a long time coming and I'm pretty excited to have my pickup back on the road, so if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a comment and stay tuned to see the build progress.